My name is Steve Olson. I'm a fish culturist at the Fraser Valley Trout Hatchery in Abbotsford, and we're part of the Freshwater Fisheries Society of British Columbia. We are spawning an Adermus cutthroat trout from the Fraser River and its tributaries. The cutthroat are all out of the Fraser and some of the tributaries, uh, some of the sloughs up around Chilliwack and down towards Mission. They're all from above Mission Bridge. We collect cutthroat starting in about November each year. The spawners are coming in feeding on the eggs from the chum mostly. And so some of these fish have been here since November, some of them have been since January. We hold them in these white tubs that uh, you see. Um, we sort through the fish once a week, pull out the fish that are ripe and ready to spawn, put them in a white tub, then we come over, I'll net them from the tub into a bucket with water and a mixture of clove oil and ethanol. That's what we use as anesthetic. And the fish will go to sleep over the course of two, three minutes. Then it makes them a lot easier to handle. They're just, it's just like if you went to the hospital for a surgery, they'll anesthetize you so that you're easier to work on. We have the, the tubs are here outside. We, when the fish are asleep, we'll bring the bucket in, inside to our spawning room. Uh, where we have a nice stainless steel counter, everything's capable of being dis disinfected when we're finished, and we actually do the spawning process inside. The cutthroat, we will we actually extrude the eggs by hand. You'll see I uh, just run my finger down the belly of the female, push the eggs out into the bowl, but you, you do have to be gentle. There is a bit of a soft touch required. If you break any of the eggs, you risk uh, destroying the rest of the batch. Every, um, every female anatomous fish that we spawn at the hatchery, we take ovarian fluid, that's the fluid that's surrounding the eggs in the body cavity. We, you'll see, we put it into a Dixie cup with the eggs. We can drain the fluid into a uh, test tube without any eggs in it. And that test tube then gets uh, shipped over to our fish health lab in Nanaimo, gets run diagnostics for disease checks. Uh, those eggs are kept separate until we get an okay from the lab that, that they are free and clear of any diseases. If something does by chance pop up, which is very, very rare, those eggs can be destroyed before they uh, ruin any of the other eggs. Our wild Fraser cutthroat generally have about a thousand eggs per female. That'll differ a little bit. Some of the smaller, two of the fish that we spawned today are smaller fish. They probably have 600 to 1,000 eggs. Yeah, the one female that we're doing today is probably the smallest female that we have on hand this year. Um, just because she's small doesn't mean the eggs are bad. So she may only have 500 eggs in her. We'll still take that fish, cross it with one male, and thereby widen our genetic pool. We, we spawn all the females into the bowls first. Then we uh, take the male and that is, ex we extrude the milk uh, by hand into the bowl. Now the, the Fraser Cutthroat wild males have a very small amount of milk. Uh, most of the viewers will be surprised to know it only takes one small little drip to fertilize that bowl full of a thousand eggs. Sometimes it takes a lot of work to try and get that small drip. So there'll be a finger in the picture capturing some of that milk and we just use the finger to stir the eggs and that's the fertilization process. Is that right, Is there eh? anything that looks like you believe how little you need? Just make sure that it all touch the inside the cable on it. So the little guys are doing their thing there now. Right now they're running around in there. Wild 
wild cutthroat in the Fraser system. Every year we have the same the same difficulty. We we don't really have a problem capturing the 30 females that we're looking for. We have a problem catching the 30 males. So um, we are allowed using the, the genetics has all been tested and we can use one single male to fertilize two females. Um, so what we do is if we have spawned one male one week, he gets an operculum punch, which you'll see here on the on the video. We just take an operculum punch. That will heal over in a matter of months easily. And then we can, as we sort the fish next week, we can take that male out and use him next week with a totally separate female. And then he can be released with the rest of the uh, kelts back into the river. It's just water that gets the sperm all active. Once the milts combined with the eggs, we pour a little bit of water in that activates the sperm. We let them sit generally for a minute or two with the water, and then we, we have to wash the eggs. Um, you get a little bit of, sometimes you get some excess milt. You get organic material in there. We rinse all of that off with fresh water, um, just by adding water and draining it off. Then we pour the eggs into a 125 parts per million iodine solution. They go into a cooler with, with that solution for 10 minutes. Just to, as, the, as the egg is water hardening, drawing the water into itself, it draws some of the iodine in. It disinfects any, any pathogens that could be inside or on the outside of the egg. Then after 10 minutes, we fill the cooler with fresh water. The eggs go into the cooler. Then they get transported back over to the other site and put into incubating jars where they stay until they hatch. After the fish is spawned and it's, it's still visibly asleep, we uh, put it back into a recovery tub with fresh water flowing in it. That fish will wake up and uh, you'll see they're floating upside down when we first put them in. They'll right themselves and be back pretty much to normal within five to 10 minutes. Every fish handles the anesthetic a little differently, but they will all wake up. We let them recover in that tub. And then with the Fraser Cutthroat, we actually do release all of the fish that we have used back into the Fraser. For the um, anatomist Fraser Cutthroat, every year we look for 30 wild pairs um, to spawn. That produces about 15,000 smolts for us that we can release back into the Fraser. We use volunteer anglers and the staff here at the hatchery to capture those fish. After we um, incubate the cutthroat eggs here at the site, we do trough them. We raise them to fry stage, and then the, these uh, progeny from the wild, wild crosses are actually shipped out to the Chehalis hatchery at the Chehalis River. They're reared there until smolt the following spring. So we'll release those fish in May next year, 2009 now. From the Chehalis hatchery, they go and we release them into the Harrison River at Kilby. From there, they're all marked with an adipose clip, just like you see any steelhead and salmon in the rivers in Region 2. They're marked with an adipose clip, released into the Harrison, and cutthroat are very nomadic. They do spread around. We capture those fish in other systems on the south side of the Fraser, all the way down to Mission, all the way up to Hope. So they really spread themselves around. What's your name, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good one. So uh, these uh, these trout that you're going to be spawning here, what system do they from here in the Fraser Valley? That is a complete secret. But they can recover from it. But you see how nervous the fish is? They just, I just move my hand oh, yeah. and, and it's all of them. You can tell, like this one's still waking up, right? But the these guys, are you going to see that?